There you go. Okay, great. Thank you, Nancy. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm Deanna Phelan, president of the New Brunswick Equestrian Association, and I'd like to welcome you all joining us from New Brunswick, and I hear from other parts of the Maritimes as well. Welcome to our second um, Sunday evening presentation um, regarding coaching. Um, uh, one of the very probably top top three goals of the NBEA is to uh, maintain the integrity of our sport, which involves having good coaching. Um, so we thought we would do during the winter months. Uh, last month, we talked about, again, reminded how to get involved in the process of becoming an instructor or a coach in English or Western. And this evening, we um, are being joined again by Danielle Yelgen from Pickering, Ontario. Um, she's been joining us in New Brunswick the last couple of years, part of the evaluation um, of the exams. And as I always ask her how things were and how are we doing in New Brunswick, um, lesson plans, um, not just in New Brunswick, comes up as being a weak area. Sometimes uh, the lesson plans are weak, but the actual coaching that day was great. So putting pen to paper seems to be a challenge for everyone. Um, and Danielle will go through the series or the process. And again, it's something you have to hand in weeks before the evaluation and she gives you lots of feedback. So for a lot of you that are joining us and um, even working with a mentor, you know, your mentor has done their job for so long, maybe they don't even have a lesson plan or a curriculum that they follow. But, um, you know, I, I know I have lots of lesson plans in my mind and, and where I want to go with my students. So we're going to dedicate the, uh, the, the tonight's program to talk about lesson plans, the strengths and weaknesses of those. So um, I will turn it over to Danielle. Welcome and take us through our course this evening, please. Awesome, thank you, Deanna, and welcome everyone. Um, so as Deanna said, ad evaluations, the lesson plans are one of the weakest points that we see uh, in the fact that it's um, a lot of the coaches don't know how to make the lesson plans meet the requirements for Question Canada, whether it's at the instructor or the competition coach context. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the outline of what we're looking for as a lesson plan as an evaluator. And at the very end of this presentation, if anyone has any questions, um, we'll give some time for that as well. Um, so I'm just gonna share my presentation. And everyone can see that? Yes. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. I just need to move this bar. Okay, so lesson plans is part of um, a portfolio that needs to be handed in when you do your uh, coaching evaluation. And the portfolio uh, consists of normally two parts for, for instructor and competition coach. It is the lesson plans and the emergency action plan. And it's the lesson plans I'm gonna be focusing on today. Um, so this is your outcome number one of an evaluation process. And in the portfolio, you need to hand in two lesson plans focused on a topic that is assigned to you by the New Brunswick or by your province, in this case it's NBEA. And one lesson plan at the instructor level is going to be a flat lesson. And then at the instructor level, you have the unmounted lesson. At the comp coach level, you do not have an unmounted, it's just a flat lesson. If you choose to follow through with a jump, uh, the jump context for your um, uh, for the instructor or comp coach, then you also need to hand in a lesson plan uh, for for jump. So an effective lesson plan, uh, the outcomes are focused on the organization of a series of lesson activities and is all written. And so I think that's where a lot of the coaches come into a problem because like Deanna said, we have our lesson plans built into our brain when we go in to teach, uh, but we don't necessarily write it down in a structure that a question candidate is asking you to. And so what we're looking for is that the lesson plan has the logistics and the structure written down. And so there's the date of the lesson, the time of the lesson, the location of where the lesson is going to be, um, that you have your goals and objectives. And that is, and uh, uh, the goals have to be both short term and long term, and that the athletes involved has all the information in there. So we're looking for the information on their skill level, the amount of riding time they have, the age, the LTD level, et cetera. 
Um, and of course, safety is a, is a big factor as well. So we want to see that the environment is safe and that you're thinking about the physical and mental needs of your athletes. So the lesson plan has eight components, so eight key parts. And so the first one is a logistics, like I talked about in the earlier slide. Then you have to do an introduction on it, a warm up, an explanation, a demonstration. You have their progressions, which is there's going to be three progressions in your riding components and two progressions in your unmounted. Then you're going to write down your cool down and your conclusion. And so basically, we're looking in the lesson plan for that uh, topic that you have. How are you going to build the lesson plan? What kind of information are you going to build in for these segments of the lesson? So the very first one, like I talked about earlier, is logistics. And so in that, it's very basic. We just need to have your name written down, the information of the lesson that you've scheduled, so the date, the time, location, how many riders do you have in your group, information on the skill level of them, and then the logistics. So what do you have to do to prepare for the lesson? What are the goals of your athletes? What are the key elements of it? What kind of equipment do you need? Uh, what do you have to need, need to consider when it comes to the safety? And where are you going to set up in your arena before you start your lesson? So very easy, very basic. Then it goes into your introduction. So the introduction should take two to three minutes. Um, in it, you should have your facility check and talk about risk management. You need to review safety rules, especially at the instructor level. Uh, the introduction of the instructor to coach and the riders and you ask about potential medical issues. There should be some two-way communication. So we're looking for some, maybe some questions you may ask the athletes at this part of the lesson. And then of course you need to have your tack check. And so that entails everything from stirrup length, girth tension, helmet, footwear. So all the attire for the rider and the horse. Um, and it has to be specific and we need to know exactly what you're going to be checking when you do the tack check. So here I'm giving you an example of what we often see in a lesson, as lesson plan under the instructor, or sorry, the introduction level or, or box. So the coaches often just put, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to ask each student their name and which horse they are riding. I'm going to check the tack and then I'm going to introduce the lesson topic that they're going to be learning that day. So that does not meet requirements in the lesson plan. So there's a lot of information missing in there. This is what an introduction should look like. And so you can see it's more specific with the tack check. And so it outlines exactly what they're going to be looking. Um, you're going to ask the students how they're feeling today. And so it's an open-ended question. They can answer uh, whether they had a bad day at school that day or whether they're feeling great, uh, if it's their birthday, you get, get a good idea of how, um, where their mindset is before they start the lesson that day. Then of course you ask about any medical issues. Then you introduce yourself and ask the riders what their names are and what their horses names are and if they have ridden them before. And so that's an important part of the introduction, especially at the instructor level, because you have a lot of students that um, come through a riding school. So they may not necessarily have ridden that horse before. And um, so it gives you an idea of their confidence level. And um, if there's anything you need to switch up in your lesson based on them not have ridden that horse before, you explain the topic to them. And then you check the arena for any safety hazards. So that has to be written down in the introduction. So we know that you are aware of what needs to be checked in the arena before you start the lesson. So in this case, I put down gates closed and that the equipment not being used is stored safely. And of course, that the footing is safe. Then you remind students of the basic riding safety rules. And so it depends on the activity, what you're, what you're actually doing for your topic. But uh, the majority of your lessons are going to be in a group. And so, of course, you need to remind them about how much space they need to keep in between them and about the basic rules that when it comes to arena safety when they're riding in a group. So the next part of your lesson plan is your warm up, and the warm up should take about eight to 15 minutes. 
So warm up should link to the main part of the lesson and it should be appropriate to the skill level of those riders and it should be sequenced properly into your lesson. So you, of course, a sequence means it should be always at the beginning before you start your, um, your progressions in the lesson. So at the very beginning, basically. So this is an example of what we see in a lesson plan, and this does not meet requirements. Uh, so often we get the coaches just write very basic, have the students walk around the ring, make sure that it's a working walk and that the horses are listening to the rider's aids, practice steering with the weave pylons, have a student practice standing up in their stirrups, pushing the weight in their heels. So that's a very basic warm up. And again, we want a lot more details on how you're going to plan that warm up. And so here's an example of what does meet requirements. Um, and so the riders will warm up with exercises that will prepare them for the trot exercise. Through the warm up, I will gauge where the riders' capabilities stand and assess the riders' suit suitability for the lesson. And so you can see here the coach is assessing them through the warm up, make sure that they're ready for the actual uh, activities that they have planned for their progressions. The riders will begin on the rail, on the left rein, at the walk, and practice a sequence of seat, leg, hand, and walk, halt, walk, progressive transitions, then repeat in the other direction, review steering aids with the students, and have them practice walking down the quarter line, steering around a cone. And so you can see in that one, they're actually working on trying to dovetail or sequence a little bit into the actual topic that they have by having them come down the quarter line, practice their steering aids. Um, and then after successful com completion, riders will progress to riding the same sequence of aids for a short tr trot transition from a walk. Riders will be assessed if this can be done with tangent points in a group, and if not done, it will be done individually. And so there, um, the coach is has a description of the activity for the warm up. It links to the topic and the progression exercises. It has both lateral and longitudinal exercises for the warm up, and it talks about the risk management. Okay, the explanation. So, this is basically uh, part of the meat and potatoes of your lesson plan. So, the explanation is one of the most important parts of the lesson plan um, because it sets the riders up for success as they progress through their progressions. Um, so the explanation only takes about one to two minutes, so it doesn't take very long. Uh, it's an explanation of the skill to be learned and practiced, and it's all about the what, why, how, where, and when of the lesson. So it explains exactly everything that they need to know about that topic and what they're going to be doing that day. And of course, again, there should be some two-way communication. And so in the explanation, it's important that you list some questions that might be asked and list the desired answers to those questions as well. And so to give you an example of an explanation that does not meet requirements. Um, so this one says, tell the students that they are going to be learning the posting trot. The posting trot is when you move up and down, but out of the saddle and down with the butt in the saddle while the horse is trotting. Okay, so clearly there's not enough information in that. And this is an expl explanation that does meet requirements. And uh, so in this one, the coach says, explain to the group that today they'll be learning how to post to the trot. And so the topic's there right away. Their students uh, know right away what they're gonna be working on. And then here are some two-way communication. So does anyone remember how many beats there are on the trot? And the answer of course is the two beat gait. Um, and then because the trot is two beats, it can be, make it feel very bouncy. And then they go into some discussion on actually how to post to the trot. And then at the very end, the discussion is about what the first progression is going to look like. And so today I've set up the arena with markers to help you identify when you will do your transitions. You will ask for the sit trot at the first marker, short, and then it goes through the A, so shorten the rein, sit deep in the saddle, squeeze both legs at the girth. And when you reach the first pylon, you will post, stand up and sit down in the saddle with each stride, and then counting out loud to the beat of the rhythm. Um, and then it goes through at the very end, some questions and answers they can ask to make sure that the students were listening and they understand completely what they're gonna be doing that day for the first progression. So this question is how many beats is a trot? 
And of course, they're going to answer where that was always already at the top. Um, and um, another question is, how do you post to the trot? Um, and then, of course, the answer is going up and down the saddle, which isn't exactly what a post is. But when you have a rider that has never posted before, that is the most basic way you can explain it to them. So you can see that the explanation, there's two-way communication. So they're asking questions to promote learning. And of course, the answers are there as well. The what is how they're going to learn how to post to the trot. The why is because the bounce makes it feel more comfortable. The how is a post and trot is when you rise your seat out of the saddle and then sit in the saddle with the horse to beat motion. The where and when is explained when the, the coach is talking about the tangent points that the students need to ride to and when it talks about how they're going to ride through that progression. Demonstration. Okay, so this is where they're going to take everything they've talked about in the explanation with the first progression, and then they're going to do a short demonstration for the students so they know exactly where they need to go to um, when they head out onto the rail. So it should only take about three to five minutes. A demonstration of the first progression should be from the beginning to the end, and it should reinforce all the aids and key elements of that progression. Um, so in this case is um, counting and maintaining a rhythm in the trot or observing diagonal legs. So whatever you're asking the students to do while they're progressing through it, it's gonna describe points of references and tangent points. And it's gonna talk about the goals of a well-executed skill. So what should, what, how, what should the student feel at the end of the progression to know that they're being successful? And this is an example of a demonstration that does not meet requirements. So in this case, the coach is going to say, I will explain that the rider will go to the rail and pick up a trot at the first marker. Once at the trot, they will stand up and post and then stand up to post and then sit down to the second marker and then walk. And so not enough information. Um, there's a lot of details missing there. You can see that the coach isn't explaining how they're going to demonstrate, where they're going to demonstrate, and um, there's no aids in that demonstration either. So I'll give you an example of a demonstration that does meet requirements. So in this case, the lesson students will stay lined up in the center of the arena with safe spacing to watch. They will be facing towards me as I demonstrate so they can see in here. I will walk to the first marker, which is letter H, and show them this is where they pick up the sitting trot by shortening the reins, sitting deep into the saddle, squeezing with both legs at the girth. I will then walk to the second marker, which is a pylon, and explain that this is where they will post to the trot by standing up and sitting down in the saddle with each stride. I will then get the students to count out loud the two beat rhythm, which is one, two, one, two, one, two, as I demonstrate with my body. When I get to the second pylon, I explain that this is where they will ask the horse to walk by sitting down in the saddle, stretching tall, taking pressure with both reins and saying, whoa. The goal is to keep the horse trotting and to be able to hold the post between the markers. And so you could see in this demonstration, there, the coach is talking about the risk management um, and that the, it is meeting the, uh, the three learning styles. And so uh, basically uh, she's talking about the feel, which is kinesthetic. She's talking through it, which is the auditory. And then the visual is her actually walking through to the letters and showing them where they need to ride to. Okay, and then this is what an arena ring setup should look like. So you can see that this has um, where the riders are gonna be placed. So you can see the students are set on the quarter line facing towards where the actual exercise is gonna be. Uh, the arena setup has the tangent points, which is the pylons, and it's written down what they're gonna do at each of those tangent points. It shows you the direction that the, the horse is going. So in this case, the horse is going on a left rein. And as we go through the progressions, you'll see that this actually rein setup covers both progression ones and progression two of the lesson. And so 
as an evaluator, I always go back to the ring setup as I'm going through the progressions to see, um, uh, uh, to get the logistics of the ride. So if it's a left rein, what letters are they riding to? Does it make sense to me if I was teaching this lesson? I would look at the ring setup to make sure that it reflects what the coach is saying in the progressions as I go through it. Okay, progressions. So this is, th there's three progressions in total, like I said earlier, um, in your um, mounted lesson plans. And each progression should build on one of another. So the first progression is the very basic of the skill that you're teaching them. And then progression two is gonna build on top of that. And then progression three is the initiation stage. And progression three is when they've already practiced a lot and so now we can actually take away some tangent points and make it a little bit more challenging for the students. Um, so each progression should take between 10 to 15 minutes and it should outline all the activities and skills to be developed and practiced. And again, like I said, the second and third progressions will build on these skills. Progression should include the objective and goal of each progression, outline what you wanna see as an outcome, a clear description of the exercise and activity, uh, the key factor, so I want to know what the aids the, the rider is going to be used, uh, what are you looking for with the rider's position, with their balance, with their eyes, um, what will you be, what will they be observing while they're going through it, and what are some possible concerns and or corrections that could come up by doing this uh, progression or the skill or this activity. Uh, bonus points if you can outline any teachable moments um, within that progression. And of course, safety reminders as required. And at the comp coach and comp coach specialist, the progressions need to always relate back to competition. And so you need to always put in it as to why this is important as a rider that does competitions or does horse shows. Okay, and so this is something that I would actually get very standard in a lesson plan that does not meet requirements. So in this one, um, uh, the topic is still the posting trot and progression one, the coach is asking, uh, to, is sending the students to the rail and having them pick up a trot. And once at the trot, they're going to try that post which is standing up and sitting down that they talked about earlier in their explanation. Progression two, at the post and trot, they're gonna have the students check to see if they're on the correct diagonal as they're posting. Progression three, they're gonna do the same exercise on the right rein. And so, as you can see from these progressions, there's no uh, aids written down. There's no goals written down. Uh, the coach has gone off topic because we're not talking about posting diagonals, we're talking about the actual post to the trot. Um, and a lot of the technical and tactical uh, information is not written into this, this example here. And so here is one that meets requirements. So this is progression number one. Um, so right away, you can see that the coach has written down how long this progression is gonna take. So four to five minutes. And they wrote down the goal is to initiate the up and down movement of the seat in a controlled environment. In this progression, the coach has the riders at a standstill and uh, the riders will push the weight into the stirrups and stand up for the count of one and then sit for the count of two. And then she talks about the safety. So while they're doing this, I'll make sure I'm standing close by to prevent the horse from walking away and we'll keep count with them, which is the one, two, one, two. And again, she talks about what she's gonna be looking for about safety is, is that the horses are evenly spaced as this is happening. Uh, positional correction she's going to be thinking about is um, making sure the rider's hands are not pulling on the horse's mouth by having them hold the pommel of the saddle. So we'll remind the students to maintain their basic position, which is the weight in the heels, eyes straight ahead, and the body tall. The outcome, so the overall goal of this progression, is that they're able to maintain the one up, two down rhythm while maintaining their position at the halt. And then progression two that does meet requirements. And it, so this is a little bit more challenging than progression one that we just talked about. So this is about six to eight minutes. And the goal is to develop the up-down movement of the seat in motion this time. 
And so this time the coach talks about sending the horses or sorry, sending the riders out on the rail. I don't know why it says riders with the halter on the rail, the little typo there. Um, so they're going to head out on a left rein with the lead horse lined up at the letter C. Once at C, they will walk to the first marker to H, pick up a sitting trot. And then, of course, she talks about the aids on how they're going to pick up the sitting trot. Um, talks about positional corrections as they pick up the, the sitting trot. So what she's looking for in the position. Um, and then once they're at the trot, they'll be posting by standing up for the one count and sitting for the two. And again, they're still counting the one, two, one, two. There's going to be tangent points set up. And so the riders know the markers that they're riding to. Um, at the third marker, they will bring the horse back to the walk by sitting in the saddle, pull with both reins. So then she goes through the aids. Safety. Again, she's going to remind the students about group safety. So making sure they keep two horses lengths in between them. Um, so all riders are at the halt, except for the rider that's in motion. So even the ones at the halt, um, she's going to talk to them about making sure their spacing is there while they're halted on the rail. Um, she talks about positional corrections she's looking for as the riders are going through the movements. And then the outcome is that they can maintain the one up, two down rhythm while maintaining the position in movement this time. Okay, so those two progressions do meet requirements. I didn't add a progression number three into this PowerPoint, but logistically there would be one in your lesson plan. Okay, so the next one is the cool down. So uh, the cool down should take about five to 10 minutes. It is appropriate to the rider level and skill level of the students. It is sequenced properly into the lesson. So again, it should be at the very end. Has a description of how the cool down will be conducted. Um, a description of a game, if appropriate for that lesson. So that would be at the instructor level. You can add in a game here. And this cool down does not meet requirements. So this one says, have the students walk on a long rein to stretch out their horse. So not enough information there. And this one does meet requirements. So to the left, have the students walk on a loose rein, making sure they still have enough contact or control of the horse should spook or go forward. Ask them to drop their left stirrup, stretch the leg, then rotate the angle, change direction and repeat. And while they're cooling down, start the conclusion of the lesson. So at this point, um, is a good time where the coach can start going into what they learned today or that day in their lesson. Okay. Um, the conclusion, the conclusion should take three to five minutes. It should list some sample questions to ask what they learned today um, and what were they reminded about in the lesson. Uh, it should relate the lesson topic skill to future training and lessons. And at the comp coach and comp coach specials level, it should relate the lesson topics uh, to competition environment again. Um, it is important to know that when you do your conclusion, you don't have to review or reflect on the full lesson. So you don't have to repeat the entire lesson. Um, it's just the students reflecting on themselves on what they learned that day. And it's a good time for the coach to, to get an idea of um, what they learned and if they did learn through the progressions of that skill level or of that lesson. So this conclusion does not meet requirements. Um, and so the coach says, tell the students they did a good job with today's lesson. Remind them that the posing trot is a 2B gate where the rider goes up and down in the saddle. Okay, so again, information missing. This conclusion does meet requirements. So we're gonna reiterate the goals and achievements of the lesson with each rider. So in this one, the coach is actually gonna to go to each rider and ask them what their goals and what they feel they achieved in that lesson that day. She's gonna ask the riders to recap to demonstrate their understanding of the lesson. Um, and then she's gonna ask them open-ended questions. And so these are questions that are not a yes or no answer it kind of makes the student uh, reflect on themselves again and to actually answer with real time um, answers. And at the, at the end, they're gonna let the students know that the next lesson, they will practice posting to the trot for a longer duration. Um, so you can see that the, it's right away selling the next lesson, right? And so the, it's making the students looking forward to coming back the next week for their lesson. 
um, by letting them know they're going to be continuing this down the road. Um, and then safety. So safety is the number one consideration when it comes to uh, teaching your lessons in your evaluation. And um, not only with it written down and added to your lesson plan, but when we're actually seeing you teaching your lesson in a live environment. Um, so you could have the best lesson ever, but if there's something that does not meet requirements for the safety, automatically we have to make you do a reevaluation. Um, and so it's very important that that's in your head as you're writing down your lesson plan so that when you go in to do your in-person evaluation, that that's at the top of your head or top of your mind when you're going through your progressions and the full lesson. Um, so in the safety and lesson plan, we want you to add notes to each part of the practice to ensure that they're being safe. You're gonna outline in detail the safety check that you do with the TAC and equipment. You're gonna add facility safety check and risk management. Um, so in this lesson plan, you saw earlier, we talked about removal of potential hazards from the arena closing the gates. We talked about the footing as well. You're going to add the review of the arena venue safety rules as they apply to the lesson. So we did talk about um, safe spacing um, and in the, um, in the demonstration that the riders is safely space facing the direction of where the coach is um, and that the coach is going to stand near the horses when she's doing the, um, the demonstration as well. And when she's doing progression one, you're gonna add the safety consideration, considerations we need to think about for each progression as well. So you wanna think about what is the activity and how can I keep these athletes as safe as possible? And that needs to be added to your lesson plan. Okay, so before I'm gonna go into this, I'm actually gonna go forward because what I did not talk about in the beginning is the difference between your lesson plan and your in-person uh, evaluation. And so um, like we reviewed so far, the, this is the logistics of a lesson plan. So, or the outline of it. So we wanna see your logistics, your introduction, your warm up, your explanation, your demonstration, your three progressions, your cool down and your conclusion. But when you're actually teaching in front of the evaluator um, in a real live evaluation, you're not going to be demonstrating all of this. And so, of course, you're not going to show us logistics when you're in front of us. You are going to show us an introduction. You are not going to show us your warm up. You are going to do your explanation, your demonstration, your progressions. You do not show us your cool down, but you do show us your conclusion. And so when we're actually evaluating you live, uh, you're not going to show us the logistics, the warm up and the cool down, but everything else is shown to us um, at the evaluation. Okay, before I move on to the next part, do I have any questions from the group about lesson plans? We don't have any in the chat, Danielle, but people can go ahead and unmute and chime in if they have a question right now. Okay. No, it's a quiet group tonight. So I have a question for you, Danielle. I'm assuming okay. that uh, the paperwork that you would download uh, off the website um, would be just a, basically um, a lesson plan and it would have just basically that an introduction. It's not going to prompt you and poke you to give all this information. It's just going to be a heading that says, give us your introduction, right? That is correct. Yeah. 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 So the the lesson, so you're talking about the lesson plan template, right? Yes. For me? Yeah. 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 So the template is just a basic uh, uh, piece of paper that has the headings on it, and then you need to fill in the boxes. Um, but there is access to uh, information on what you can put into your lesson plan. Um, so either there is the online module, which is planned in the question practice, which you can get off of eCampus, which is uh, a three-day course that you can do on lesson planning. And by the end of that three-day course, you do build your own lesson plan that meets the requirements of um, Equestrian Canada. And there is also a help sheet that is available for lesson planning. And I'm not sure, does, does New Brunswick have that on their website, the lesson plan help sheet? I don't think so. 
Yeah, so I can, you could send us and I'll share with this group. Absolutely, I can forward that to you and you can post it for them. And so the help help sheet basically has an outline of what we're looking for in each segment of your lesson plan. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, and then another thing to mention is when you hand, when you complete your lesson plan, you hand it into your evaluators, expect to have to do a second revision and even sometimes a third revision. Um, and so uh, very, very few times do we get a lesson plan where we see everything the first time. Uh, a lot of times as an evaluator, we send the lesson pl- plan back and the questions aren't necessarily geared towards you something you've done wrong in your lesson plan. It could be something that we want more information out from you. So we want to kind of like test your coaching to see uh, where you are with your coach and how much experience you have and kind of challenge you one step further than what you've shown us in your lesson plan. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next part. And then if there's more questions at the end, we can do that. Okay, so these are some things you need to consider when you're handing in your lesson plan. Um, So again, lesson plans are part of the coach's portfolio that needs to be submitted ahead of time to the evaluator. Topics are assigned a minimum of two weeks before the evaluation. And so you are given a specific topic that you need to cover on your lesson plan. You can't make up your own. Um, And then you then have one week to submit your lesson plan back to the evaluator. Feedback will be provided on portfolio outcomes as soon as these are received and evaluated. So once the evaluators receive the lesson plans, we look at them, we then Uh, write down some comments and suggestions on it, and then we send them back to you so that we can get some revisions from you. Candidates will provide missing information or make corrections as soon as the feedback is received from the evaluator until the outcome meets the minimum standard. Um, And so again, like I said, that uh, as soon as you receive our, uh, our comments, then you need to review and revise your lesson plan, send it back to us, And there's always two-way communication going on between the evaluator and the coach at this point. And so we do a lot of pre-brief and debrief as we progress through it. Um, Because of course, the outcome is that we want you to meet standard for your lesson plans or your outcome one before you go into your evaluation. Re-evaluations requiring more than two responses from the evaluator to the candidate may result in additional evaluation fees. And so sometimes uh, we, re- we send in the lesson plan or send it back with some su- suggestions for revisions and it still does not re- re- meet requirements. Often we will allow this to go for a third time. If for whatever reason, we feel that there's not gonna be enough information in the lesson plan by the time the evaluation date comes back, uh, either, NBEA will be charging an additional evaluation fee for the, just for the lesson plan, because then at that point, the uh, evaluator has become a mentor. So they're going to have to mentor you a little bit more through completing this. Um, or they may suggest that you wait for your evaluation until the next period. And so you spend a little bit more time uh, working on lesson plans for a few more months before you actually uh, go ahead with your evaluation. If the candidate requires many revisions to prepare an appropriate portfolio, evaluation may not be recommended prior to the additional training being completed. The areas in which more practice or training is required will be clearly outlined to each candidate in the feedback, as well as a pre-brief and a debrief of the session, and an action plan for further training to enhance performance or plan for the future will also be provided to the candidate. And so we always recommend additional training that the coach can do um, in order to uh, get more professional development for the lesson plan and for their outcomes for the evaluation process. Um, Okay, any questions from the group? Do we have anyone in this group that signed up for an evaluation that is working on lesson plans right now that you may have a a specific question about? I'll get you to unshare your screen, Danielle, if your PowerPoint's finished and we can see a little better. 
I have a couple of questions on my mind. Um, <laughs> just make sure I'm not intruding on anybody in the chat. Nope. Um, <clears throat> How important is it that the written lesson plans detail the words that the instructor is going to be using? Like, is it okay to describe um, the introduction, for example, without having to write the script of what that person is going to be saying? Yeah, absolutely. And so there's two ways that we've seen it. So we've, we've seen where they have actually written down exactly what they're going to be saying to their athletes. Um, and then some uh, coaches use point forms of what they're going to cover. Both ways are acceptable as long as the information is in there. Right. Um, <clears throat> as you're going through the presentation, I know your focus is detailing what the expectations are for an evaluation situation. But as a former teacher and as a, a coach, I'm thinking, this has been such a great review for just the day-to-day -day lessons that coaches are teaching. Just yeah. sparked great reminders about um, linking things to the previous lesson and, and good ways to use questioning to review at the end and so on. Yeah. Um, have you ever had circumstances where a candidate has used a horse and rider for the demonstration part, like brought in one of their students or a friend to like demonstrate rising trot, for example, rather than trying to yeah. fake it on their feet on the ground. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have had that. Um, and so it, it is acceptable to have a student uh, bring a student in to dem do the demonstration. It cannot be a student that's already part of that lesson. Um, but the coach has to be mindful of the time. Right. And so that that rider has to be ready to go. And so as soon as the demonstration is ready to go, that rider has to have done their warm up. Right. They're ready to demonstrate right away. And then the rider has to leave the ring. And so they can progress through the lesson from there. Makes sense. It's just a couple of minutes that that phase of the lesson, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know it depends on the topic as well. So some topics it's useful to have a rider around to do the demonstration. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, jump topics, for example, is probably better where you're just walking where you want them to go and they have an explanation because by the time you have a rider that has to warm up over a jump and then do the demonstration through the exercise, and then you're putting yourself out there if there should be an error from that rider that's demonstrating through the jump. So a refusal, right. um, knocking the rail, not doing the correct striding. And so then it ends up being a lesson within the lesson. Right. The risk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Jean's asking, are there any video examples of what a poor lesson versus a good lesson might look like? For the, for the teaching component, I'm assuming you're managing gather, when yeah. they're actually teaching. I would think so. Um, I'm, the, good question. <laughs> um, so there is videos, but unfortunately they're not public right now. Okay. Um, I do believe the Ontario Equestrian, what we're doing right now is we're actually, um, we're getting a bunch of videos put together and that is the ideal situation is where we have, um, uh, videos of what not to do, what what to do when you're actually teaching your lesson. Mm -hmm. um, but the videos right now that we have, uh, there's a privacy issue right now. We're trying to keep it within the cohorts that we're doing. Sure. Um, but that is something definitely that we're looking for in the future. I think that would be so helpful. Yes. Yeah. Um. One of our viewers is asking, do you also assume that there are three students for lesson plans? Yeah. And so for your coaching um, evaluations, you do have to demonstrate group control. So we do expect three students, no more, no less mm -hmm. um, in your lessons. I mean, I mean things happen sometimes a uh, horse, horse comes in lame. And so we end up with two, two horses in the lesson. Um, but your actual lesson plan itself, you should assume that there's three riders and three horses in there. Mm -hmm. The only time that changes is when you have to do your comp coach equitation lesson, which is the third lesson they have to do, which is an, a private lesson. Um, and then the Western context as well has, has a private lesson or individual lesson built into theirs for the comp coach level. 
Okay, very good. Any other questions, folks? Verbal or written, either way. Well, that's great. Um, just to add to that, um, the NBEA will have some prep clinics this summer. Um, I always encourage you to go out and get a mentor who can help you with this. Uh, again, I encourage you to find someone that is familiar with the coaching program. Uh, again, there's lots of great riding instructors in New Brunswick. It's just like, you know, I've said before, it's like taking a driving lesson from your father or your mother. They might not know all of the requirements that are required for the day of the teaching. You have to hold the steering wheel at 10 to 2. And we don't always do that same thing when you come prepared to teach lessons in the coaching program there's an expectation that you will uh, uphold the standard so if you're not presently working with someone that's familiar with that you may be a little bit misled uh, misled i should say so stay tuned the nbea will be having some prep clinics this summer where you can come with your lesson plan where you will be given a topic to teach and if you're currently wanting to get involved there's lots of good teachers out there we can help you find someone in your area um, or we have our own coach developers, Donna McGinnis and Valerie Phelan, both people. That, and again, we had a program last year where we um, we assisted you in paying for your mentoring lessons. So if you brought them in to assist you, we were financially helping you with that as well. Um, so again, the whole point is to find someone that's very familiar with the standards if you're going to receive or be getting a mentor. And we generally try to run a prep clinic in the spring and also during the summer. And June 11th, which Nancy will be sending out a, a heading soon, if not already, is that if there is enough interest, we will um, aim for an evaluation in instructors or uh, competition coach for Sunday, June 11. Uh, again, I'll remind you that you need to have all of your prerequisites. If you do not have your rider six or your rider four and what well in English, and if you don't have your first aid, you don't have these things, do not do not come because we're not running it. So you must have all your prerequisites done beforehand. Um, so um, that concludes our evening. This remember, this is being um, taped. So if you need to come back and um, gather more information from it, um, please look on our website for that. And um, I, I thank you all for participating this evening, for getting some information and, and hopefully starting your own coaching journey. Or if you're presently mentoring some people that you're keeping your own standards up. And I, I do appreciate that. Um, thank you, Danielle for um, joining us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you in June and probably in the, remember we'll have a date in June for an exam and we will be looking to have another exam probably I think the end of September or the 1st of October. So um, the snow is uh, lifting soon. The sun's gonna start shining. Everyone's gonna be teaching more come April and May. So, um, um, you know, just stay on, stay on plan. Let us help you as best, best we can. And we look forward to seeing you all hopefully this summer. So thank you again, Nancy, for hosting and uh, Danielle for participating. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you again. Thanks everybody. Thank Good night. Bye.